Hello, let's continue our Bible study through Psalm 91, and today we're going to look at verses 5 through 8 together. And notice with me in verse number 5. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. And we'll stop our reading right there. Now remember, we've been reading Psalm 91, and God, I hope, has used it to encourage you. This is our Psalm of the Week, and I hope that you are taking time every morning and evening to read it and to pray and ask God for help during this time. But we've talked about here um, how we're to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. And as we dwell, that secret place is our communion with God on a daily basis in prayer, in the reading of His Word. And as we dwell in daily, constant communion with God, we experience God's divine protection and how He delivers us from both the secret and the private atta- the public attacks of the enemy. And we also learn today that as we dwell with God in the secret place, He can deliver you and I from fear. And I want you to see that that's exactly what's said here in verses 5 through 8. You say, fear of what? Well, the fear of 10, the fear, in verse number 5, of the terror by night. And what's the terror by night? That is an unexpected attack that leads to death. Perhaps they were thinking militarily, if you were in a camp and an army was taken overnight and attacked by the enemy, the terror by night would be, Uh, the enemy attacking unexpectedly. And then we see the arrow that flieth by day. Well, this is going into battle and an arrow coming at you and catching you sort of unexpectedly. And in a moment, life is over. Then he says, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness. The pestilence is modern day language. It's the coronavirus. It is a pandemic a disease that infects multitudes of people, and somehow it gets into your home. It comes in by darkness. You're not exactly how it got there, but it infects and impacts everybody. It's a pandemic. And then he says, that way the nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Well, that is an event, perhaps a natural disaster, something tragic that takes place not in secret, but in broad daylight. Maybe he had in mind an earthquake. Or something that impacted a lot of people. Flooding or a a mudslide. Something of that nature where many people are affected and people die as a result of it. Now, what do these things have in common? They have really two things. One, all of them result in death. And two, it happens unexpectedly. It doesn't come to people who are expecting to die. Rather, it comes unexpectedly and it impacts multitudes of people. And the psalmist is saying here to the person that dwells with God on a continual basis, who has experienced God's divine protection, knows that you and I aren't to be afraid of these unexpected uh, disasters that can take people's lives. We're not to be afraid of that. And you say, why is it that we're not to be afraid of that? We're not to be afraid of it because in our dwelling with God, in our secret communion with God, as we learn of Him, we have learned, one, to trust in God's timing, that our death is in God's hands. That is not something you and I can control. And two, in our preparedness. Though death may take us unprepared, we are prepared to meet our Maker, our Almighty God. We know him as our Lord and Savior, and we are busy about what he has given us to do right now. We're dwelling with him. And so we're not afraid. We're not worried. Everyone else can be worried and afraid and terrified, but we're not. Why? Because we're prepared to meet God. Now, as you look in verse number in verse number seven, if if you're not careful, it seems to say here that. He says, a thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand. That is, multitudes of people are impacted by these four unexpected disasters that I've just mentioned. He said, but it shall not come nigh to thee. Now, 
that may mean at that isolated person to who the psalmist was talking to that those tragedies at the moment won't happen to them. But that does not mean in a broader context that tragedy will never happen to any Christian. And that's a, a foolish way to look at this portion of Scripture. We know many godly people who know God, who have a stronger communion than you do and I do at this moment with our Heavenly Father, have had tragedy strike. The Lord Jesus had perfect communion with God. He had perfect faith, and yet he went to the cross and died at 33 and a half years. That John the Baptist, who Jesus said there was none greater among men that had been born other than John the Baptist, was beheaded. And many other people, godly people, die of cancer and disease and many other things. So just because you have faith and you have communion with God doesn't mean bad things aren't going to happen to you. It means that the fear, the fear is not going to have a grip, a hold of you. The fear of death is not going to limit God's working in your own life. This doesn't mean that you and I also can just go out and live however we want to and we might catch a disease. We may catch the coronavirus and it's not going to matter because if we die at that time, then that's it. That's what God wanted. No, not at all. That's what the devil tempted Jesus with in Matthew 4. He said just, he brought him up to the pinnacle of the temple. He said, just cast yourself down. And if you cast yourself down, God's not going to let you die. He was tempting God. You and I aren't to be foolish about these things, but we're also not to be fearful. You and I, as believers, people who dwell in the secret place of the Most High, should be some of the most level-headed people in the face of national disaster and tragedy. The death of the wicked, he says here in verse number 8, Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Do you know what the reward of the wick wicked is? It is to die unexpectedly or expectedly and to not be prepared to meet God. That's the most terrible thing that could happen in any of these times. And in order for you and I to not be fearful, to not be afraid, it's not to live in some fantasy land and think that tragedy is never going to happen. No, it's to make sure that you and I are prepared to meet God. Do you know God as your Savior today? And if you do, are you dwelling with him in your secret place? Can I tell you, to die, Christ, Paul said, is gain. To, to sudden death is sudden glory. It's not something to be afraid of. Rather, for the Christian, death has lost its sting. The grave has lost its victory because of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's not people be people today who are afraid, but let's live by faith and trust God. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you tonight in the Wednesday night meeting.